uncle uh, has been passing for a long time, and uh, he said one time and uh, they had church in St. Louis, they had basements down in it, and they had a guest speaker, and he was up tearing it up, and they said, where is the, the wife? They said that she's down in the basement, said, go down there and get her. They went down there and got her, and this is really true. She was eating wallamill in the basement. She said, baby, I live with him. I live with him. It's an honor and a privilege to, to represent my wife. God brought us together. I was in a bad state when I met my wife. But see, everyone here, you might not be married, but you're married to God. Amen. If you're single, you married to God. Amen. And when you recognize that, things are going to open up. And as long as you keep on serving, Amen. stay up under That's your right. leadership, Amen. and serve God, no matter what it looks like, he will bless you. Amen. God put us together. We both just so happened to be going to the same beautician shop. It's a barber and beautician yeah, shop. Man. Uh -huh. I happened to know the lady that owned the shop for a long time. Uh -huh. And it just so happened my wife was going there. God bought me here in 2009. I lost everything. Wow. Hey, glory. Wow. 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 Everything. Wow. Hey. Everything. <laughs> And there was times, hey, glory, that I wanted to give up. But I kept pressing. See, it's something about when your family knows what you are. Your family know what you are. My kids, them kept saying, Daddy, it's going to be all right. Living in a roach-infected place. Hey, glory to you. There wasn't no roaches in my place. I knew what to do mm. to keep them around, but filth all around me. Every time I got a job, I lost it. Lord, what are you trying to say to me? See, you can be in church all right, now. and be serving God, Amen. and it's just become a form. Mm -hmm. Giving ain't no problem. Yeah. Right. And you can get your eyes off the prize of yes. what it's really about. Mm -hmm. It's about serving uh -huh. God to reach someone to go to heaven. Yeah. See, sometimes when we come to church, we get saved, we on fire for God. Mm -hmm. But we take our eyes off the prize. Mm -hmm. And that prize is Jesus yes, sir. to serve. Yes, sir. That's what it's all about. Amen. Mm -hmm. And when he brought us together, I ain't going to go into it. We met, we dated for two years and three months. Hallelujah. When we met, Hallelujah. she said, baby, I don't sleep around. All right, man. See, sometimes, if you're looking for something, like they just said, women have power. Let, let me throw this in for you, and I won't charge for this. A woman can get anything they want, never raise a hem of their dress. Amen. How you living? Amen. How you living? Amen. It ain't in the club. Amen. Yeah, I like secular music, but what kind of secular music is you listen to it? I don't like that kind of music to say, hey, sweetie. I mean, let's keep it 100. Amen. But how you living? God knows your heart. You ain't got to be certain. The Bible says when a man, hey, glory, Amen. finds a woman. Let's say it like this. When a man finds a queen, a helpmate. And men, that don't mean that you be like no bull in a china cabin. I'm the head of the household. You might not be able to even be able to handle the finances. She might be. That's part of helpmate. But he brought us together. And she told me, she said, baby, I don't sleep around. Mm -hmm. That did something for me in the ministry, dating, and still sleeping around. Didn't want to do the whole six. Six. See, I'll tell you, see, sometimes preachers, yes, sir. we want to act like we have yes, arrived sir. and all that. And some of the biggest hypocrites yes, there is. And they got some ministry yes, sisters, too. Every city they go in, they got somebody. Yes, that did 
something for me. All right. It made me check myself. Right. Dated for two years and three months. I know exactly. <laughs> and I thank God for it. Amen. See, when God is in something, yes, sir. it's going to be right. Amen. Come on now. She brought our children together. That ain't nothing but God. All of them get along. Our grandkids, that's God. That's God. I'm not saying that we don't have no problems. Sometimes it's me. But being able to have a helpmate or someone that you know when you're down that can minister to you and lift you up, that's what it's all about. All of you in here, ladies, y'all are flowers. Ready to be smelled. Amen. Just keep on looking pretty Because God knows what you need But how bad do you really want to serve him And forget about your problems Forget about your problems And I guarantee you He will bless you Even the ones that's married If that husband's cutting up You stay on your knees And just keep on living right Amen he will touch that man because that man gonna be looking at you. Now, baby, it's not like she used to be. What is it? Yeah. Some of you might in here might not be decide to give your life to God. Your husband ain't even saved. Don't go home getting on him. Just live right. Amen. Just live right. A drunk already knows he's a drunk. You ain't got to tell him that. Love will cover everything. And my wife, she comes from Chicago. Her job moved her here. She works for AT&T. She's been in the ministry since 2000. She really opened the church in 2008. And she really loves the Lord. Amen. I really have to say that. And you have to really love the Lord to be able to put up with me. <laughs> see, I keep it 100. Amen. Because see, when you decide to serve God, the whirlwinds don't come at you. Sometimes I don't understand what's coming up against me, but to be able to have someone to minister to you is an honor. She loves people. She works hard. She's an entrepreneur. And our first thing between both of you is souls. That's what it's all about. I'm just now meeting y'all pastor. Amen. And your first lady. Amen. Amen. But when he said increase Amen. our territory. Amen. Do you know how to increase? I know I'm supposed to be uh, introducing my wife. <laughs> but to increase your territory, stay with him. Yes. Stay with the first lady. Yes. And watch y'all grow and watch it grow even in your life. The church can't grow if y'all not growing. Amen. Amen. It can't grow. Amen. Listen to him. Amen. Honor him. Amen. That don't mean that you worship in him. Honor him. Amen. Follow the vision that he has put in place that God has given him. Yes. Follow him Amen. as he follow Jesus. Amen. And I present to you Amen. my beautiful wife, Amen. Pastor Vader William. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, come on, give him some praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You may be seated in his presence. I was thinking about my husband. I said, Lord, they're going to ask him to introduce me. <laughs> and they're going to know our whole story. <laughs> Before we leave there, but that's all right. Amen. Amen. Giving honor and praise to God, to this awesome pastor, first lady, all the ministers, my husband, Gregory Williams. Hallelujah. Now he says, I bless you. Amen. It is truly an honor to be here. Amen. And I've just been, I've just been blessed. I came into the room. I told First Lady, I said, you know, we're not people that run in the door when it's time to preach, but we'll be there early. And we came in and saw you all about your father's business. And we thank God for the example. You all were working together. And let me say this, I've worked with many ministries, and part of the work that my husband and I both have done 
even though we weren't together all those years, but both of us have always worked with churches and built churches. That was the work that God had given us was to help build churches. So we know what it's like to come in to ministries and we know you can come in in a situation like this and can tell, is it all together or is it about to fall apart? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And we saw the people of God busy about their father's business and we do give God glory and honor. Even when God told me to open up my church in Chicago before I left there, I said, God, I don't need a choir. I don't need a deacon board. I don't need some mean usher at the at the door beating up on the people of God. But I just want to serve you, God. And God said, but I want you to open up your church. But this is what God gave me to do. He gave me to train up leaders for the body of Christ. Because we got a lot of folk that want to start their churches, but don't nobody want to help nobody else build. Amen. Don't nobody else want to go in and serve. They want to hit this pulpit. Glory tonight. And so God had me training up leaders, men and women of God, and you, glory to God, about their father's business. And we would go into different ministries and serve and help those churches build. And we would intercede. Sometimes God would tell us to go to a church, hallelujah, that we weren't even fellowshipping with, but just go sit on the back. I just want you to pray for that church because you don't know what they're going through, but I know what they're going through. And so we would go in and serve and serve. And I thank God for that. Sister Nigel, Minister Nigel was a part of that work and her God brought her and her family here from Chicago. As a matter of fact, half of those leaders are actually in Texas. That's what's so funny. They're not all in Dallas, but some of them are in San Antonio, just all over the place. And so we just give God glory. So it truly is an honor to be here. And I was listening to the songs, some of my favorite yes, worship yes. songs. Amen. And I just thought about this word that God gave me to minister to you all. God began to minister to me way back. And truly, your first lady is an example. I didn't know she was a first lady. I'm a marketplace minister, and I walk in the apostolic in the marketplace. God has called me to be a minister in the marketplace because he said there are leaders, there are people in the marketplace, in the business world, that won't come to the church. So I need somebody that's going to represent me in the workplace. I know we think it's all in the church, but I'm called to be a marketplace apostle. Amen. So I'm in that about my father's business, but I'm winning out. Oh, he's going gonna, he's gonna to preach. You, you might as well let it alone. Because the leader in me is speaking. That spirit is speaking to him. And I was listening to him earlier. At first he was crying. But then he just started just, just preaching. I said, listen to him. So he, you know, we just go, he going to be on the tape. Yeah. But it's all good. Amen. Amen. So it's all good. So, so she and I were in a session and, and I kid you not, that thing turned left like two minutes into the conversation. We were talking about her career. And all of a sudden, the Spirit of the Lord just showed up in the midst of us. And she just began to share. And we began to talk and share our testimonies. And, and all of a sudden, it was, wow, you know, we get ready to have this, this Women's Day. And my husband's been in prayer. We, we, I mean, just who are you? And where do you come from? And where you been? And I don't even think we had even, I'd been there like for the last year. And I'd never even met her. But divine Amen. timing. Amen. And yet she was representing Christ. Amen. In the corporate place. And I thank God for her. So I just give God honor and glory for being here today. We are truly excited about what God is saying and so let's get into the word. I'm excited about what God is doing. He's giving me this word, like I said, way back. My husband and I were getting ready to get on the road and go on vacation. And I was like, God, you're speaking to me about this thing. But for such a time as now. So let's just go into the prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, we just thank you. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your voice in the place, oh God. Hallelujah. We command flesh to decrease and that you would come forth and speak what you would have to say to your people, oh God. We cast down imagination and we take authority over every wandering mind right now in the name of Jesus. And we command those thoughts to come subject and obedient. Hallelujah to you, oh God. We speak to the hearts of men, oh God, and we cry out and pray, God, that you would minister, that you would break through every stony place, oh God. Hallelujah. And have your way, oh God. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Amen. So the word that God gave me was a faith you have never seen before. <laughs> and I thought about it. I said, oh, God. And, and, and let me say this. It was, it was my story. I didn't know it was your word, but it was also my word first. Mm -hmm. and, and God had been dealing with me because years ago I was in the finance industry for many years before I got into telco. And it wasn't until my youngest son, who's now 23, was being born that God brought me out of the finance industry and told me to go home and be a mother. And I was like, uh -uh. you know what? I got a baby said I can pay for that. Um, I'm going back to work, you know, six weeks, four weeks, whatever it is that, you know, maternity leave was back then. And so God said, no, I need you to go home and, and raise my profit because what I need to put in him that the babysitter don't have it, but you got it. And then I say, but I'm used to sitting in the big office on the 50, 50th floor, the 56th floor, wherever I was at that time. I don't have time to be sitting at the house Hallelujah. doing laundry. And getting the dinner menu together for the week. Somebody else can do that. Yeah, yeah. Come on now. Because I work. And that's what I do. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. But yet God told me to go home. And so in that season, you know, I tried to go back. And, and, and my whole household, uh, we just kind of fell apart at that time. Because we were in disobedience. Well, I was in disobedience. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was... Uh, you know, just out of order, okay. and 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 everything fell apart. And I said, "Okay, God, I'm gonna go home and raise your profit." Two years into that, God said, "Okay, now it's time for you to prepare to go back." Mm -hmm. And the Lord put in my spirit telecommunications, and I was like, hey, "I'm a banker, you know, that's what we do." Mm -hmm. And so that's a blue collar job, and and I'm used to sitting in the office and. Yet God said, no, this is where I wanted you to go. And that was 21 years ago. Mm -hmm. But that was a place of faith for me. And, and God said, this is what I want you to do. And, and, and I didn't understand that for the place, you know, he said he would go before us and make the crooked yeah, yeah. places straight. Yeah. You know, and I know sometimes we don't want to go the way God wants us to go because we think we know better than God. But when I look back over my life and I see what God has brought me from, that was the right move. Amen. Hallelujah. Because what I thought I was making in the banking industry, God had tripled that thing and some. I didn't have a house when I was working in the banking industry, but I'm on my third house. You understand what I'm saying? So God, so that was one of those places of faith that God had me to, to transition and move. It was a faith that I had never seen before. It was something that I had never done before. It was a place of trusting in God that I had never experienced before. So, okay, now we going on through it. You know, now I'm working in the telecommunications industry, and God begins to deal with me about leadership because I didn't come in in leadership, but I was a leader. God put me in the earth realm. He said, before you were in your mother's belly, I knew you, and I ordained you. Well, I was a leader when I came into the earth realm, but I didn't, who was that? I didn't know my value. Somebody said that early. I didn't understand my value and, and who I really was, but I was tired of the resistance that the enemy was coming yeah. to push me out of purpose and push me into bondage and keep me in a place that wasn't a part of my purpose. Hallelujah. But God said, you're called to be a leader, so I'm getting ready to move you. But let me let me give you some, some scriptures because I gotta tell this story because it's gonna make sense to you. Go to Romans, the eighth chapter. Amen. Hallelujah. Huh. Oh, glory. Because it's gonna all make sense. I don't know what you're going through, but I know there's some people in this place, glory to God, that God is calling you to another place, and you're settling. You're settling for what is less than what God is calling you to. And yet there's a greater glory that God wants to bring forth. It ain't just you getting up off of your, you know, the duff and, and doing something different, doing something you've never done before. But God is trying to make the crooked places straight for you because where you're going, you need to be provided for. You need victory, but I know you're holding on to the old and you're holding on to something that you think is great for you. And that's not what's good for you. God got something greater. Had I stayed in the banking industry, 
saints. Remember, they ate each other up like Pac-Man. When I was in banking, Bank of America was a California bank. When I was in banking, Chase Bank was a New York bank. And now they, they nationwide. We were just in, on an international trip and we could get some money from Chase. Hallelujah. But back in the day, I thought that was something great. But see, that was getting ready to shrink. And God said, I got something that is prosperous for you. You won't get laid off. You won't lose your job. But I'm sending you to a place so that you can continue to be prosperous. Amen. Are you with me today? Amen. So Romans, the eighth chapter. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, please don't stand because I, I, I'm a teacher of the word. Y'all going to be... I'm going to be popping up and down all day, but just, just let your heart be connected with this word. Amen. So the 24th verse says, for we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. What you hoping for when you can see the chair sitting there? Oh, I hope it's a chair there. No, the chair is already there. I can see the chair. So that can't be hope. I'm not hoping for the chair. The chair is already there. Amen. Are you with me? For what a man said, why does he yet hope for it? But if we hope for that, we see not. Then do we with patience wait on it. And God is calling us to a place of faith, a faith you've never seen before. So I need you to get in your mind about the things that you've never done before, that you've never gone through before, that you've never experienced before. Hallelujah. I'm not talking about what you can see down the road. Amen. Amen. I'm talking about what you can't see. What some of us are afraid of. What some of us are too lazy to experience. That just takes too much work. I, I just don't know. Uh, hallelujah. But there comes a time where we recognize that we need to increase our faith. Luke, the 17th chapter. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The 17th chapter and the fourth verse. Uh, he said, Jesus was talking to the disciples. He says, for if he trespass, and Jesus was ministering to them. And I just thought this was one of those, you know, those transparent moments. But he says, if he trespasses against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. And here go the apostles. <laughs> and the apostles said unto the Lord, increase our faith. <laughs> Are you serious? That took faith. In other words, they recognized there was a need for my faith to be greater because I can't see killing this flesh enough to forgive seven times, seven and seven and whatever. I can't see that. If they slap me on one side of my face, I gotta turn it up. I need some faith for that. Come on, saints. I heard somebody talking about uh, speeding and something on the road. I don't know, somebody was talking about something, but I was laughing. I said, mm, they going to get it. <laughs> but anyway, the disciples said, increase our faith. Now, that was something very small. Forgiveness is for you. It ain't for the other person. You're being held in bondage, but that's for another day. Let's go to Hebrews, the 11th chapter, because I'm trying to build your faith up. Because when I'm getting ready to take you in this word, I need you to be ready to just embrace it. Hebrews, the 11th chapter. We all know it, right? Hebrews, the 11th chapter. Y'all probably can quote it with yeah. me. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not. It is the evidence of things not seen. I cannot see this thing. So coming up through leadership, getting ready for leadership, I got to go on with this story a little bit because I got to bring you to Texas because I'm still in Illinois at this time. And God was dealing with me about, you know, leadership. And, and I remember telling my second boss, I said, you know, I said, I'm, 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 I'm getting ready to retire. She said, retire? This is, this is 1998. 98. She says, I says, I'm getting ready. I'm trying to find me a position where I can just sit down and put my feet, feet up on there. She said, no, 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 no. She said, you have too much to offer this company mm -hmm. for you to get relaxed. She said, nothing, I'm getting ready to kick you out of my department. Mm -hmm. So I'm at this company. 
Um, when I met her, I, I met her over a phone conversation, and then she told me about the job that I was in. And then I'm sitting in that job, and, and, and now I'm, I'm serving in that job in, in an HR and IT position. And this other lady come up to me, and she said, why haven't you been for my jobs in my department? I said, well, I didn't know. Oh he favored me. Yeah, <laughs> come on, y'all. And so I've been on that job, and then I was there for a while, and then they said, but they were assembling this national uh, methods and procedures team, and, and then I was picked for that. I didn't even ask for that. Again, he favored me, but my purpose was speaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so here God set me up, right, because, you know, sometimes he'll cause us to go through something, and when we go through that hard place, and our faith allow, you know, pushes us into that place, and then he give us a little break, and all of a sudden people tapping you on the shoulder, and everything just seemed easy. You're like, okay, I made it now. I didn't went through all my trials. I think everything is all right. The bills are getting paid. The kids are all right. Amen. I got a little property. I got some clothes. We got a little piece of car. I think we're doing all right. Ain't gonna be no more trials. I may have to pray for somebody, but no, ain't gonna be no trials. Tribulation, not like that, not what I've gone through. Well, <laughs> so I went to that job, and you know, a couple of years later, you know, got a leadership role and began to walk in leadership as well as walking in ministry. And oh my god, coming up, I'm just gonna kind of fast forward to right before I left Chicago, the Lord showed me in a vision. He showed me I was getting ready to go through something. Mm -hmm. He showed me two situations, two major situations that I was getting ready to go through. And at the end of the dream, my youngest son and I got in a white car. I was driving a white trailblazer at that time and, and we left Chicago. But God didn't show me the intensity mm. of the trial. And so, I, I probably, I, this is hair guy. But, but, but if y'all, if the dad was gone, All right, now. Come on now. it would be like my husband's hair. I know y'all thought he married this young woman. <laughs> I'm a little bit closer to him in age than you think I am. Or that I look like, amen. But before that trial, I didn't have a lot of great hair. But I went through two major situations, had a family member that was in a situation where they could go away and do some major time. And I remember standing in the police station. I was afraid of police stations. I didn't like police stations. But yet that day I got the phone call that I needed to come down to the police station. And I'm standing there with some family members because me and my family, we hadn't seen that type of trial. But yet I found myself looking at a family member that I knew this could, it's got to be this trial. It's got to be something that I'm getting ready to go through. But my heart was beating so fast and I was so afraid and I said God I don't understand and I'm looking at these family members and I'm like I, they can't pray y'all cannot make these policemen let my family member go you know and every time the police would come from the back and speak to us and seem like the the, the, the locks would get louder and louder you know I just see and I couldn't knock that door down I wasn't Superman I wasn't Spiderman I wasn't all Iron Man and everybody else that can knock stuff down and, and, and look through and knock uh, iron up down or whatever. So I'm standing there and I turn my face to the wall. And at that time, Prashia Hilliard's song, Jesus, 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 something happens when I call that name. And I'm standing in the police station and I'm looking, I'm saying, Jesus, something happens when I call you. And so I was calling on his name and calling on his name and the other family members was over there to the side but they know how crazy I'm about my Lord Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so if nobody can do it, he can. Yeah. Have you ever been in a situation yeah. where you felt hopeless yeah. and the world was telling you that you can't fix this and that it's going to be bad and you just got to accept the situation, but Jesus, I, I know uh, you can change this thing. I've never been in this place before. 
God. And I can't leave Chicago with things the way they are, God. So you got to fix this thing. And all of a sudden, those locks, on, they begin man. to come click. Out. And those men begin to come back there. Huh? And we say, we, they say, we sending your family member home. Huh? And you don't have to worry. Huh? Y'all don't have to worry. Huh? We know something happened. Huh? But it's not what it seems to be. Huh? So God knew. Hallelujah. So that's the first trial. Huh? I started turning gray. Huh? But I was like, all right. Well, going a little bit further. And here goes God. I had to go out of town. The Lord told me there was a person I had been ministering to. And he said, I just need you to go to Atlanta. And I need you to spend a week ministering to this sister. And I said, okay. And I got on the road and took a sister with me. And we went and we checked into a hotel. And we began to minister to this sister. Well, one night, I'm in the car. I'm going to dinner. And I get a call about that same family member. And they said they would pick them up again and put them in jail for the same situation. But another, I said, what? Why are we here in this situation? God, I don't understand. Huh? This is a thing. I mean, what are you calling me to do, God? I don't understand. You're my God. Huh? And the Bible says you give your angels charge over us. And you cover us. And you shield us. God, why are we here? So I'm crying out to God. I said, okay, we went on to dinner and we got back to the hotel that night and that sister went to bed and I got on the floor and I got in the corner and I put that cover over me and I put that CD on and I began to sing that song. I said, God, if you can't, if you don't do it, it can't be done. If you don't fix this, it can't be done. Amen. I can't leave Chicago with things out of order. I gotta leave because I got to get up out of here. I was less than 60 days out with packing up my life and leaving Chicago. And so I'm in prayer and I got back to Chicago and I just want you to know within a day, but within a week, that situation was resolved and they said it was a lie. What are you saying to me, God? I've never been in this place before. I've never seen this trial before. I thought everything was all right. I thought I was in good standing. I'm your minister. I'm your servant. I do whatever you want me to do, God. But my faith needed to go to a place that it had never gone to before. And then right after that, my youngest child, my daughter followed later. Uh, but my youngest child got, got in the car with me and we left Chicago. So we came on to Dallas and, and, and as a matter of fact, let me tell you about that job. That was a job that I was talking to an old mentor of mine about another situation and God had told me, he said, prepare, you're getting ready to go to Dallas. I had never been to Dallas, Texas before in my life. Didn't know nothing about it, didn't know nobody here but the people I talked on the phone with. And talking to this person, they said, hey, babe, I got this job in Dallas, Texas, but I can't feel it because nobody wants the job. I said, because it's my job. I know God's opening up the door. But I, you know, I just didn't know how it was going to happen. See, when you walk in your faith and you trust in the Lord, God, you ain't got to kick the door open. You ain't got to go seeking for your man because God's going to bring him to you. You ain't got to compromise. You can just live. So got that job again. I'm in down in Dallas, Texas, and 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 God, everything is going great. And and then I started dating this man, and oh Lord Jesus, I had been there, done that. Daddy was dead, and I was like, hey, everything is all right. And I didn't been down that road. I didn't been a wife, and I'm a mom, and the baby is in college, and I'm doing what I want to do and living how I want to live. And then I started dating this guy, and. Because God had told me a couple of months before that sister, she and I had raised our children together. And I had, she had never prophesied to me. She was my homie, like, girl, what's up, you know? And, you know, we didn't, I mean, we knew each other on a spiritual level, but we were also homies. So when we talked, you know, it was girl and girl and girl. And she said, she said, girl, I need to call you back because I got something to tell you. I was like, oh, God. This probably was November. 
So she called me back. She said, girl, she said, God got this preacher for you. She said, but girl, you don't even want him because you don't want to be married no more. But God said to his glory, I'm calling you to marry this man. I was like, are you serious? <laughs> <sighs> Nothing wrong with him. Nothing wrong with him. Treat me like a queen. But I was too lazy and too, you know, just didn't want to deal with it no more. And didn't want to be that wife and got to see about him because I was saying about me. I was comfortable. I know some people don't want to be by themselves. But I was good. I was great. I didn't have no problem. I can watch TV. I can laugh at the TV. I can say, girl, and I say, huh? I'm telling you, it was all. the holidays. Yeah. <laughs> and then they started telling me about this man and I said, oh God. This, they say, Miss Vader, he, he like you, you know, when he come, he come in the shop and he just be preaching to everybody. I said, oh God, that go to preach. <laughs> <laughs> then I went to my, my, my godmother who told me she wasn't going to go on to be with the Lord until I got married. I said, I'm not. But she said, oh yeah, you're going to get married again. She said, that's him. She said, oh, girl, he go. I said, who is he? You don't even know his name. What you talking about? She said, girl, that's him. He going to treat you like a queen. He going to love you. Oh, girl, I can't wait to meet my new son-in-law. She up in California, up in Oakland, California, somewhere. What? So, you know, all the story we met and everything. So we dating. Pastor, he didn't want his wife on the road. I was on the road at that time in a, in a position where I had to travel all the time. He was already saying, can I take you to the airport? And can I pick you up from the airport? No, I can get an Uber. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna be at work at, no, baby, you got to, uh, can I tell you? I was like, oh, Lord, I didn't make it easy, and I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't make it easy. If he was my husband, he was gonna be my husband. So we started dating, and like I said, he, you know, he didn't say it out loud, but I knew he didn't like that I was going and coming. Cause he a brother want his girl right at the house yeah, yeah. every night. It's okay that you go to work, but you need to come on home <laughs> and sit next to me and hold my hands while I watch cowboy movies and, and pass the Jimmy Swagger to somebody, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. That's what he wanted, cause he was gonna watch him a preacher or he was gonna watch him a cowboy movie. And he wanted me to be sitting there and I didn't want to watch no cowboy movie. I wanted to see Judge Judy. I'm gonna tell you what I wanted to do. Am I telling the truth? Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so all of a sudden, my heart began to disconnect from that job. I said, oh, God, here you come. You finna mm, take me real. off the road, and you taking me back home. Is it, is I, I got to marry this man for real, Jesus. I think we're about a year, year and a half in on this thing. And uh, all of a sudden, I came in off the road, and my boss said to me, he said, I need you to come to my office because I need to talk to you about something. And I said, okay, God, where are we going with this? And so he brought me in his office. He said, now, don't you ever take, at that time I was an individual contributor. I had been in leadership for many years. And he said, don't you ever take another job that's not in leadership. You're called to be a leader. He says, and we like the way you take care of our people. And I got a leadership position for you that I need you to take. He said, we like the way you take care of our customers, and we Amen. like the way you take care of our people. Ah! And see, I know ah! what God would say if I mistreated right. his people. Amen. Amen. Oh, I know we act a different way. Yeah. The preacher not looking and 
when the evangelist is not looking, sometimes we're nasty to the waitresses, the waiters, right. you know, our neighbors, uh, our co-workers, but God is looking yes, and he is. has a problem, and I know he has a problem, so I've just decided to try to treat everybody the way God wants me to treat them. And so the company was looking at me, and they said, we want you to come off the road. I said, God, I got to marry this man now, okay, I get you. And so my beautician had gone to the shop this particular day and she said, she said, Miss Bailey, she said, the job that you get is not the job that you're going to have. Well, what kind of schizophrenic word is that? Well, what kind of, conf you know, what kind of confusing word is that? So I had accepted that particular position and it had people reporting, had individual contributors reporting into it. And a week later, after meeting my new boss, he said, you know, he says, that's not the job that I want you in. I want you leading leaders. So that's the schizophrenic word that kind of came forward. It was God speaking to me to let me know. So fast forward, you know, I've been in that role for a few years and things like that. And, and, and I came to this word, you all. And, and what happened is, is that in December of last year, I was sitting down talking to my vice president and I was thinking about what is my next move. Mm -hmm. And he began to talk about a position of where you really want to go. Now, I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable. I'm, I am. I'm comfortable. But y'all know God make the crooked places straight. So he's trying to provide for my posterity. Amen. And so as I'm talking to my vice president, all of a sudden, his, he, he's not even there, it's me and the Holy Spirit sitting, and we're having a conversation, and he says, Veda, I'm pushing you to a place of faith you've never been to before. I'm telling you, I need you to believe me for something that you cannot see. I said, okay, I can see the next level. He said, so that ain't it. I said, okay. So I began to think about what is that something, and, and, and I got that position in my mind, and, and I began to go home, and my vice president said, now this is my vision board, I want you to check this out, he said, because I want you to be thinking about it, because when the door opens, come on, this is God speaking to me, when the door opens, I need you to know how to speak to what they're going to bring to you. And so I'm sitting there, and when I walk out of his office, I'm in tears because I'm saying, God, you are really getting ready to take me to a place of faith. See, this is not about comfort, you guys. This is not about having enough to pay the bills. This is not about everything is good at the house. Because I know sometimes we're working towards just getting so we can get to pay the bills and put $2 in the bank. But this is not about that. This is about faith. And this is about your relationship with your God. And this is about your purpose. Because when he sent you into the earth, friend, you came into the earth with a blueprint on your life. He already had desire what he wanted you to do. And you can, when you move from that instead of on that path, you have all of these struggles and fights and battles that are not your battles to fight. I know you're right. Have you ever been through something and you say, I don't get it. This is too hard. Every time I touch something, it seems like it's a trial. Seem like it's something gonna happen. It's like, why am I in this place? I don't get it. And then God said, because you, where you're not supposed to be. Have you ever been in that place yeah, before? Yeah, yeah. But that's that's that situation. When you decide to disobey God, get ready for the trial. Yeah. Ain't your trial. Yeah. Don't get mad at God. Don't get an attitude with your friend, with your girlfriend, with the prophet, with the pastor. But get mad at yourself yeah. and change your behavior. Yeah. Hallelujah. Let me, let me get you on down the road here. So, so we've gone to Hebrews and, and we're ready to, you know, go forward. And so, amen. So go to Zechariah, the 13th chapter. Hallelujah. Because there comes a time when God calls you to this place. Hallelujah. This place of faith that you've got to rise up into. Hallelujah. He's trying to do something in you. Hallelujah. 
Because as my husband said, when I got to Dallas, when we began to, you know, fellowship, and then eventually we got married, and my husband was already at a church, and I was working ministry and doing some things that God had told me to do, not realizing the reason why God wouldn't settle me into a local church or have me to start my church again was because my husband was sent in to build a church. And so we, we're, you know, working with this, this local ministry and things of that nature. But how can we just get married and just start a church, mother? Mm -hmm. We needed to work together. And we needed to learn each other. Yeah, yeah. We needed to learn how to serve each other. Because how many of y'all know when you go into ministry, the enemy coming for you? Yeah. He coming for your marriage. Yeah. Because if he's going to smack, smack the, uh, the shepherd, he's going to scatter the sheep. Yes, so he's coming for them. And he's coming to them. And so we had to learn to work together. We couldn't just start building a church because that was the vision. And I had the 501c3 and the ministry and everything, the whole structure of the ministry already in place. I had to, we had to learn to work together and serve together. Amen. Amen. So doing all of that, but God has to burn off some things off of our lives. Are you in Zechariah? I'm reading from the 13th verse, the 13th chapter, the 8th verse, and it says, and it shall come to pass, and you can write that down, it shall come to pass that in the land, said the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein, and I will bring the third part through the fire, and will refine them as silver is refined, and will try them as gold is tried, and they shall call on my name, and I will hear them, and I will say, it is my people, and they shall say, the Lord is my God. See, there are trials that you're going to go through. There's some things, some places of faith that your faith has to rise up to. Glory to God. And if you don't do it, you don't understand God is trying to burn off some things. This is a new ministry. This is a new work. I've been there. And if your faith is not there, the enemy, he coming after all of y'all. How dare you start a new work? How dare you come in here and go after the souls of men? How dare you get out here and start going after souls instead of after money and things? Amen. Amen. You need to understand. That's why it's a small group. And I was sitting there and I said, Lord, I hope they hold on to the fire. I hope they stay close to the fire. I hope they hold on. Don't let the enemy come in and lie. Don't let the enemy come in and plant lies in your mind. Don't let the enemy come in and dissuade you and discourage you. Because God's going to add as he wants to add. All you got to do is stay in the vision and stay with the work. Amen. Amen. So it may be a little small because he got to burn off some stuff. Because your faith got to rise up to where God wants to take this church. You ain't going to be in a hotel forever. You got to build. You got to get property. Y'all got to get children's church started. You got to get the choir. Hallelujah. Start with all of those things that you got to do to run this work. This homeless ministry that this church got to do. This missionary and outreach that God Y'all need to understand yes. who God has called y'all to oh, be. Amen. So he burning some stuff off. Mm. Some of y'all walked away from some things, some places. Glory to God because you believed in the man and the woman of God. But you was, it wasn't like you was in a bad place. Huh? But you said, I believe. Huh? I'm going to walk in this thing, God. Because huh? you told me to walk away and go with them. Huh? You told me to hook on with them. Huh? And they hold so I'm going in this thing in faith. I was comfortable sitting in my nice seat. But God, you told me to get up and go with them. And hang with them. And pray with them. And stand with them. Amen. 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 I said, Lord, have mercy. Look at these people. So I want to push you. Just one more step. Are you there with me? Yeah, Are y'all with me? Huh? Can you hear God speaking to you today? Huh? Yeah, Women in red. Huh? People in red. Huh? People covered by the blood of Jesus. Oh, huh? There's power in the blood. Yeah, huh? Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Huh? Turn your Bibles to 2 Kings. Hallelujah. And then I'm going to 
shut this thing down and be done. But I'm telling you, God's got something. This is a faith he's calling you to. A faith you've never seen before. Some of you all are called to walk out of some places. Huh? Some of you all are called to stand and hold on and see the salvation of the Lord. Huh? I even hear somebody, huh? somebody speaking in your ear huh? and telling you I wouldn't deal with that. Huh? I wouldn't take that. Huh? I wouldn't go through that. Huh? I ain't going to put up with that. Huh? But God is saying you need to put up with that answer. Huh? You need to get on the other side of that trial. Huh? You need to walk on through the fire. Uh, and get your flesh burnt. Uh, hallelujah. Glory to God. I need to burn on some fat. Uh, glory to God because I need you to come forth in your character uh, and in your integrity. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, oh yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Are you with me? Second Kings, the fourth chapter. So here we have a widow. Now, this is where I'm trying to get to, but it's just been so good. I have enjoyed y'all. <laughs> Hallelujah. And here's a widow. By all accounts, her husband is a man of God. Was. He died. He was a prophet. And we look at people sometimes and we see the position that their husband or their wife holds. And, or we see the position they hold in the church. And, and we say they got to be all of that. They must be strong and all of that. But here we have a widow. Mm -hmm. And her husband died. Mm -hmm. And for whatever reason, I don't know, we could have died young. I don't know. But they were not prepared. Oh Their bills were not paid. Oh there were things that were undone when he died. And he had some debts. They had some debts. And they were getting ready to take her children into slavery because she had nothing to pay the bills. And she went crying to the prophet. So let's read fourth chapter, the first verse. And it says, Now they cried, there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, the, Thy servant, my husband, is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear. Oh, now she's so deep. He feared, y'all know he feared the Lord, right? Uh-huh. And the creditor has come to take unto him my two sons to be bothered. Now, if you the wife of the prophet, Seems to me like you should be a pretty good intercessor. I know that's what it looked like, huh? but that's not what it is. Huh? She didn't have no faith. Huh? She went crying to a man, huh? but yet her husband was the prophet, the mouthpiece of God. How is it that you don't have a relationship with God, but he's got a relationship? Oh, come on. Are you hearing me? But now you deep and ha uh, He loved the Lord. He feared God. How do you know? Huh? You don't even know the Lord. Because huh? if you knew the Lord, huh, you can cry to him. Huh? And he would have came and gave you this word. But since you didn't know that he would do that, you wouldn't cry to Elijah. Okay, so we with Elijah now. How many people go to the pastor? And pastor, you know, he pray for you. Huh? And he stand with you. But he be saying, didn't I preach on this last week? Huh? Didn't you hear a word? As I recall, this is what the word was last week. Uh, and so let me remind you what the word said. Uh, and let us pray. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Habasata. Glory to God. Uh, and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondsmen. And Elijah said unto her, what shall I do for What I'm going to do for you? Uh, he knew God like I knew God. Uh, but anyway, uh, tell me what thou ha what hast thou in the house? And he said, and she said, thy handmaid had not anything in the house save a pot of oil. And he said, go and borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors and empty, even empty vessels. Borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door thee and upon thy sons and shall pour into the vessels and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels and she poured out. And it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said unto her sons, bring me a vessel. Now, 
Hallelujah. Glory to God. I need something to blow my nose. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Ooh. Here, she went and she shut the door. She was also instructed, don't say nothing. Mm -hmm. Don't tell. Maybe she was one of them wives that was always running her mouth. <laughs> you know, God don't make no mistakes. And he tell us stuff. If you can keep a secret, he wouldn't even mention it. But yet he told her, don't say nothing. Just close the door. How are you hearing me? She was getting ready to go through something she had never been before. She was experiencing something that seemed like if your husband is the prophet, seemed like you've seen the hand of God move. Amen. Seemed like you've seen God say some things. He was of the company of prophets of Elisha. Y'all know Elisha did not play. This was an anointed man of God, and he didn't play. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And remember, he got a double portion. So here, she should have known something about God. Uh -huh. But yet, she crying unto the man of God. So she was experiencing something she had never gone through before. I'm going to tell you this quick story. A sister I used to work with back in Chicago. Her father was a, he was a deacon in the church. And he would, she said, oh, baby, he'd go in the garage and just pray, 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 pray. Well, the Lord took him on. And her mother was like the, the, the deaconess in the church with the, you know, with the little doily on her head and, you know, working the Lord's supper and all of that. And so she began to go to church with her daughter right after her husband died. And when they opened up the doors of the church, that first Sunday she was there, she went up and gave her life to the Lord. She was not saved. I heard Pastor say it earlier, we got to stop playing church. Yeah. Yeah. Let me tell you something Amen. I'm serious about my relationship with God. Yeah. It wasn't just because the word says that I need to keep myself, but I could not imagine going into the presence of God after having gotten out of the bed with him, sleeping with him, yeah, I know you're right. dating him. Right. And then I've been in the presence of the Lord, and I'm going into his presence, and now I'm too busy crying because I didn't slept with this right. man. Right. And I can't right. even right. get prayer right. Come on now. Right. 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 I can't even talk to God because I got so much shame on me. The devil was a lie. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 So I wasn't going to live that life no more. Are you hearing me? Yes, yes. This was about my relationship with the Lord. Mm -hmm. God is calling you to a new level of oh, faith. A faith you never experienced mm -hmm. before. A faith, something that, but guess what? Guess what's going to call for? A trial you've never experienced before. I came through that trial, I'm telling you, even my kids said, Mama, you need some hair dye or something. Because you did age 10 years, right. two months. Uh, but that was a trial, that was something I had never seen before. Yes. They got hair dye to deal with yes. that. Yes. Hallelujah. But my faith is in a place that it has never been before. And now God is calling me to a new place of faith. your hands unto the Lord and just worship him. Amen. Just worship him. Thank you, Jesus. Oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just uh, come on, pull on him. Tell him that you know you don't feel strong enough to go to this place. You don't feel strong enough to make this decision that you need to make. Say, Lord, forgive me even for rejecting your vision. Yes, Lord for my life and your plan. Somebody got a family member that they need to get up out of their house. 
Hallelujah. But God say you got the strip. All you got to do is sit. So they gonna be mad for a little while, but it's for they for His glory and for their for their prosperity and for their purpose. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands up to the Lord. Oh God, I just lift your people to you, oh God. And I thank you for a faith that we've never seen before. I thank you for a trial that we've never seen before. I thank you for a blessing that I've never, we've never seen before, God. I thank you for a place of elevation that we've never seen before in our finances, in our health, in our relationships. Hallelujah, in our ministries, uh, in the hallelujah, the fruitfulness of our ministries, in the effectiveness uh, of our ministry. I'm going to change my attitude. Uh, I'm not going to use the excuse no more that you know my heart. Uh, that's why you're telling me to change, because you know my heart. Oh, hallelujah, I just thank you for covering us with your blood. We cast down imaginations uh, and every high thing that exalts itself against the true knowledge of God. Uh, we do bring our thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ in the name of Jesus. Uh, we take authority, hallelujah, over the enemy that would war against our hearts and our souls. Uh, and we're going to walk past that trial. We're going to walk past, hallelujah, the resistance, and we're going to push and stand as you called us to stand that we can receive the blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.